Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some really intriguing DIY display technology. Maker James Brown has been working on his persistence of vision volumetric displays for a while, but recently he's boosted the resolution and added a plexiglass housing. We've seen POV displays before, made of spinning LEDs, but in most cases they're usually flat 2D images. James's version involves an LED matrix spinning at 600 revolutions per minute, adding depth into the image, so as you move around, the perspective on the image also changes, creating a hologram-like appearance. James continues to experiment with new things, and you can follow progress on his Mastodon account. Another curious project I saw recently was the Svalbard, an unusual keyboard designed to custom fit the user and be ergonomic to the extreme. Hackaday wrote an interesting article on the project, along with details on how typing on such a device works. You can see from the demonstration video that users can reach decent typing speeds by barely moving their hands. It's not cheap at $750, but for those who type all day, especially if you have RSI, it might be worth it. Moving over to robotics, and we're beginning to see more types of autonomous robots enter different industries. Dutch startup Monumental recently raised $25 million to scale their autonomous construction robots across Europe. The company has different robots that both lay brick and also autonomously carry them around construction sites. They're also adopting a new trend with their business strategy too. Instead of customers buying their robots, the startup is hired by contractors as a subcontractor in a kind of robots as a service model. Grain Weevil also takes this approach with their grain bin service robots. Farmers can hire the company to send their weevil bots into large grain bins filled with corn and other foods in order to break up large clumps, something that apparently is a pretty dangerous job for humans. In similar workbot news, Dusty Robotics released the new version of their field printer robot last month. We first saw this interesting construction robot last year, but for those who haven't seen it, this little thing basically prints precise construction layout drawings directly onto construction site floors, so all workers have the same info and know exactly where everything should go. This new version is apparently smarter and faster than the previous. 1X uploaded a new video a few weeks ago showing off their humanoid robots performing a range of tasks, stressing that everything included in the video is fully autonomous and not teleoperated like a lot of demonstrations we've seen, and that the video is running at normal speed. I think this is another example of how humanoid robots will begin entering the workplace sooner than most people think. If this is basically version 1 of these things, who knows what's next. In robotics research news and a team from ETH Zurich presented Podipulate, learning-based control approach to enable manipulation skills with a quadruped robot's leg. In its current form it allows teleoperators to use the quadruped's leg for all sorts of tasks like opening room doors and fridges, pressing buttons, and lifting and carrying heavy objects like a backpack. What's particularly impressive is how the system auto-balances and compensates with its weight distribution, even on slippery surfaces. Also remember that even though it's currently teleoperated, I imagine this method will serve as training data, so these robots will eventually be able to do all this stuff fully autonomously. Switching to flying machines and we have a little update regarding the topic of electric VTOLs we've been seeing a lot of. Joby Aviation recently signed an exclusivity deal with the government of Dubai to bring their air taxi service to the Emirates for six years. Operations will begin next year, with the launch of full commercial air taxi operations going into 2026. If all goes to plan, I believe this will be one of the first to start actual customer-facing rides in the world, which is fast considering many of these companies only completed their first test flights last year. Sticking with aviation, and two airlines are trialling the use of augmented reality during flights. Through the month of February, more than 20 Hainan Airlines flights will incorporate the Rokid AR glasses, preloaded with several 3D offline movies, allowing passengers to enjoy a novel form of in-flight entertainment. Another airline, Beyond, will also be providing Apple Vision Pro headsets to their passengers for in-flight entertainment too. Moving to artificial intelligence and outside of Google's interesting launch of Gemini last week, we have two new generative AI announcements. Stability AI showed an early preview of Stable Diffusion version 3 a few days ago. This latest iteration of the text-to-image generator is shaping up to be the most capable yet, and if any of their example images are anything to go by, the output quality continues to improve. A waitlist has been opened for early preview, and you can sign up using the link in the description. 
And ending this week, OpenAI also unveiled their impressive new text-to-video generative AI called Sora. There's not much to say other than this is nuts. Just think how far all of these new image and video generation models have come in just the last two years. It really does seem to be scaling exponentially, which is both exciting and a little scary. I mean, look at these videos generated using text prompts through Sora. Who would have believed that even five years ago? Again, this is currently available to select users before opening up to the public shortly. We're in for some wild times, people. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.